to take this opportunity to thank the pastor for this opportunity to share the word of God and also to thank uh, Mama Feza and everyone sitting. Without you, I won't be speaking to the seat, right? Amen. So I want to invite you to um, just listen to me as if a child is talking. You know, when a baby is talking, a child is talking, you go close and try to listen very well. So I won't be speaking like the way pastors speak. Amen? So don't expect me to speak like pastor. So accept me the way I am. So do you agree with me? Okay, so we're going to uh, go in the word of God, and I believe that this is the word for this season. Amen? Uh, God has been blessing us, um, the Beatitudes. If you are blessed, can you clap for the Lord? I'm not going to go too far away today because God is not taking me to something else. I have a topic that I had in mind, but that was not what God wanted me to preach today. But God showed me something which is called one of the many blessings that he has for us. There are so many blessings that God has given us, but I want to talk on one today. Are you with me? So if you are with me, let's open our Bible into the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. So the way we do it, our tradition, we're going to rise up and read that together. Amen? So let's read this together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen? Looking at this, you can have your seat. Looking at this verse, we see that our God is worthy of praise. Why? For blessing man with all spiritual blessings. And this spiritual blessings is true Jesus. In this same verse, we see the three Godhead present. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In this same verse. And when we talk about the blessings, where are these blessings located? Anyone? from the verse, in heavenly places, amen? These blessings are present in heavenly places. And when we talk about heavenly places, what comes in mind is what? Heaven. Uh, the spiritual benefit that we're granted to believers are retained in heaven for us. And these are progressively dispersed to us when we need it here on earth. And the good thing is that we have Jesus where? In us. You remember what Jesus says? The Father is in me, I'm in the Father. The same way you also will be what? I will be in you. So if Jesus is in you, what do you have in you? Heaven. Amen? So in this verse, we have seen here that the blessing, the spiritual blessings for believers are applied through what? The Holy Spirit. So every spiritual blessings that we need, the peace we are asking for, Jesus said, I already gave you my peace. I leave it with you. The healing we are asking for has been done many, many years ago. Amen? So we see that our Heavenly Father has blessed us with everything that we need as a Christian. And what he has done is that he continually give this to us the way we needed Jesus Holy Spirit release it to us. So every blessings we need, God has already given to us. The book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's go there. 2 Peter 3 says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him, who call us by what? Glory and virtue. So God's divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Through the true knowledge of him, who call us by his own glory and excellence. So it is not that God will give us, but he has already given us. Amen? He has blessed us already with every spiritual blessing. That means that we are complete in him. I, I'm supposed to hear amen to that. Too. We are complete in who? In God. Amen? The Christians, as we are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us, 
Jesus is seated in the heavenly places, and we are seated with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, verse 6. And raised us up together, and made us sit together in the way. Heavenly places in who? Christ Jesus. Amen? James 1, 17. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from where? So every gift we have, every perfect gift is from who? God. And we are receiving this through Jesus. Once you have accepted Jesus in your life, what happens is all these things are there already. It's complete in you. Amen? Amen? And when we have this knowledge, we have no need to worry. But I'm going to ask you a question today, which I think will lead me to a testimony. Last week, the choir was singing a song, uh, It All Belongs to You. Yeah, I surrender it all, all that. When that song was going last week, a chapter opened up within me. There are so many things that God has done, but I don't know if you are in that category too, where you are unable to speak something out, but you experience it. And it looks like there are times that God really wants you to say some things. There are many times I want to voice something out and my mouth shut. But last week, God opened my eyes to something that I think it's time to release. Amen? So I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a position in your life where you know that the reality facing you you cannot change it and you are afraid. If you have been in that position, just wave to me so I can know that I'm talking to people that we are, okay, all right. So um, I've never been afraid the way I was afraid in my life last year, October. October of 2020. I've never been in that position before. But um, because of the time, I won't be able to touch so many things, but I will just cut it short. Last year, COVID showed up, right? COVID messed up everybody's plan. Many people are restarting now the goal of last year in 2021. But what happened was, I prayed to God that I don't want COVID in my family. But COVID show up anyway. On October 2nd, we are all tested positive. And I, I was thinking, I said, uh, why did God allow this? But that was not even the, the whole issue. The whole issue was that one of my children, Joshua, we have been warned to make sure we keep him out. He must not be contaminated by COVID because of his immune system. And we were warned that it can lead to death. So here I am with him in the hospital, Moses Cohn. But something happened on October 9. But before I go to October 9, let me, let me go back a little. A little. The same month of October, the year before, you all know my sister, the youngest, passed away. That's a picture right there. When she passed, it was like, no, this can't happen. I was told that she was sick. We're talking. I talked with her in the hospital. Um, she has finished serving the country. She did a NYSC. Uh, she opened a studio. I don't know. There's another picture there for her uh, uh, in the studio. And you can see her too with my other sister at the wedding. But one thing I noticed is that the news like took me into something else, like, no, this can't happen, and I refuse to hear that, that that is the situation. 
Amen? Uh, that is her studio, when she opened up the studio. Uh, she was full of life. She was talking to me about marriage a week before that, about planning for marriage. And they told me she passed. I went into serious prayer. I've never prayed like that before. I locked myself up. While praying, some hours later, God revealed something to me, which is uh, God says, I took her. And God showed me that she came in this world at a date of birth. She came in January 01, 12, 91. And God showed me the reverse of that date. If you look at whole one, if you turn it around, it becomes what? 10. 12 becomes what? 21. 91 becomes what? Become what? 19. The same day. So she was taken. If you reverse that date, it says like the way she came, the way I took him. I took her. I refused that this cannot be the case. We were in serious prayer. We set up prayer group, everybody praying. Uh, people in Nigeria, we are touching base every hour to pray. I would tell them, go to the place again. Let's call her to wake up. We did all that. She did not wake up. They told me they had to bury her because she is young. I said, no, you can't bury her. Leave her. They said, okay, they have to put her in the mortuary. <laughs> Then I look, I look in the scripture. You know, I believe every word of this Bible. And I'm one of those people that feel like everything that the disciple has done, we can do it. Because Jesus said what? What he has done, we will do what? More. So I believe that so much, I believe she's going to wake up. We pray, she was in the mortuary. They told me, they keep calling me, we need to bury her. I said, what is it about burying? Nobody should bury her. And I tried everything I can. I said, no, I'm going to Nigeria. For one purpose only. I wasn't going there to go bury her. I was going to go wake her up. Are you with me? So everybody that came, they greeted me. In the Chain the Nations Church, showered me with so much love that I say, I'm not, that's her in the media team. She was serving as media and children department. I was so Feel with that faith that if I go there, I just need to lay my hands on her, call her house, she's going to wake up. And uh, traveling down, I talked with Pastor. I said, Pastor, we, we pray. He said, OK, go. Um, I went down to, to, to go to Nigeria. I faced so many challenges. Visa issue, plane, cancel. No, I missed the flight. It's not cancel. The flight <laughs> left me. I had to stay, go back to Atlanta, then go to Nigeria. I got to Nigeria the day I would get to Nigeria. Let me even talk about that day. Back in May of 2019, God told me to get my passport ready, that I'll be going to Nigeria in October. I told my wife, I said, I need to get my passport ready because I'm, then I feel on the form, you know, you have to write on the form when you want to travel and for what and where. So I put there, I'm going to Nigeria in October. I didn't know for what. With all the delay and everything, I got to the airport, I landed. Then the spirit talked to me, what is today's date? Then I said, today is October 31. It didn't occur to me until I came back to US and saw the form. I said, wow, this is what God has planned for many months before. I got to Nigeria on October 31st. I put in the form I will be there in October. So even with all the delay, you didn't miss that month. Amen? So still looking at that and I'm wondering what God is doing, I got straight to the church, went to pray. I went to, I don't want people to know that I'm in town. I went to the church guest house. I was in the guest house. And on the day of burial, before the day of burial, I make every attempt to go see her. They don't let me go in. So the morning they asked me, okay, you say you want to see her? I said, yeah. Then I open her up, I place my hand on her head, call her name, call her, I pray, call her three times. She didn't wake up. Then I came outside, I called Pastor, I said, I think God has truly taken her. Because if I call her three times, she didn't come back, 
God has taken her. But do you think I gave up? No. I'm st- something in me is still telling me she's still not dead. She's going to wake up. I continue to pray. I went back to the guest house. She has been buried already. I was in the guest house still trying to call her out, you know. And the next thing I discovered was I checked out from that guest house. I went to book the hotel next to the burial ground. So I know that if God say, okay, go and get her, I can just cross the fence. It's less than one minute I will get to where she was buried. So I was there for, please, I may be vulnerable today. Don't, you know, please accept me. I was there for seven days, every night, hoping that maybe she will show up or God will give me permission to go and get her. And it didn't happen. I came back to US, I felt so bad. And still, I'm still praying that God can still send her back. Not until October 9, 2020. That means I have not accepted that she's gone for over a year, for a year. I'm still feeling that. But what happened on October 9, um, I was in the room with my son. It got to the point where the doctors have done everything. They've increased the dosage, increased the dosage. The pain is not going away. Then I went into my car in the parking lot of Moses Cone. Then I called God. I said, God, you didn't hear my prayer for my sister. Now is my son. What are you trying to do, God? This is one month, and I've been so sensitive in that month, that period, because the prayer and fasting started in September. And if you remember, we are even praying here for untimely death, premature death, during that season. And there are so many reports of people dying around that time. Even there was a sister that I called. She is in Las Vegas. I called her. She told me even she was talking with her mother the day before. She got the news her mother passed the morning. So it's like, what is going on? So I was in the car um, talking to God. But what happened next? I don't know how to share with anybody. It's just like I find myself in another place entirely, but still in my car. I know I'm in my car. But it's like, you know, You know the hair bag in the car? As if they came out and they cover me. Then I feel like I'm in another world entirely. But what I experienced at that moment was peace. Yeah. I experienced peace in another level. When we look in the scripture and we say peace that surpasses all understanding, that was the peace. At that moment, it's like um, um, we know the dam, where the dam, the water, it's like they just open up a dam and water were flowing with force. And God started showing me so many chapters of my life coming so quick that at that moment, I think they said there are four stages of grief or five or seven stages of grief. But I moved from stage of denial to acceptance immediately that God is the one that gave and took my sister. And God is telling me that he took her for a reason. Then he told me something else, that you, do you think you will be alive today? God, the day I was born, I was not meant to be alive. I was not born in the hospital. I was not, my mom doesn't even worry about getting antenatal, uh, prenatal care. So it was like this boy 
will not be alive. But I was born, and she was surprised looking at me. Everybody thought I would be dead the next time, the next day or two. But God showed me I've been the one keeping you. Now you are worrying about your children. It showed me so many things that may have taken my life. Show me what may have taken my life, how I was released April 1st of 2012 from the path to dying. It showed me so many things. It even showed me how it rescued me from ulcer and arthritis disease right here in this church, 2013. But there is a part of that that I left out. I didn't share with anybody. It showed me what happened in the bathroom right here. We were praying. I went to use the bathroom. That was the last thing I know. The next thing I knew was I was on the floor of the bathroom, lying flat. And it's showing me to see what he has done. I didn't know what occurred then until later. This is eight years. I don't take any medicine for anything. That experience I've never shared with anybody. Maybe my wife. I shared it with you, eh? When? This was released last Sunday. And several other ones that God has done, but with time, when the Holy Spirit says, say it out, I will. Amen? Amen. <sighs> Okay, I need to, to round up on this one so we can touch what we need to touch today. Amen? But one thing I, I want to remind us is that God is forever faithful. He is forever faithful. Um, on that day when I was praying, when God showed up, that was a Friday, if I remember correctly. October 9, 2020. It was on a Friday. We were supposed to have Bible study that evening. And in my mind, I was thinking of calling pastor to cover for me. But after that moment, something changed in me. That is when I... You know when we talk about faith... Um, Faith versus, can you change this slide? It keeps, it, it's giving me some kind of, yeah, can you go to the next one there, please? Um, yeah, even this one, this is the date I was talking about earlier. Um, okay, better. So, I was um, thinking of not teaching Bible study that night so I can focus on my son. But something in me said, go ahead and teach. So in that hospital room, we started the teaching of Bible study. And immediately we started. It was like hell broke loose. Movement everywhere. The alarm going off. Everybody rushing in. Like calling doctors. It's like emergency situation. Then I was just concentrated on the Bible study. Anyone that was uh, with us on that Bible study, I didn't know that. I was trying to mute anytime they are making noise, but it looks like people were noticing that something was going on. Because after, Mama Feza sent me a voicemail that it, she prayed that she had everything going on there. So I said, oh, so people know. It got to the point where my son couldn't even remember his own name. They pointed to me, who is that? He doesn't even remember or know me. It got to the level where I was teaching and I'm looking like, am I going to lose? I said, no. But in the car, something happened that I left out. Uh, God told me to pick up my phone. I pick up my phone 
the very message that came in was um, children are the heritage from God, right? In that message, the person is like he's talking to me. He said, the children God gave to you is not yours. They are God's. God is the one that put them in your care. Don't worry about them because they belong to God. So I look, I said, wow. So since then, I just feel like they are God's. God, they are your children. So it's like I'm just taking care of what belongs to God. Amen. So I look and I was looking at him, looking at all the doctors and nurses. I just continued to to lead the Bible study. And some of them were looking at me with so bad high, like, what kind of a man is this? I didn't know until one of them returned later. You know, all the time we were teaching Bible study, everything was going wrong. But immediately we finished the Bible study, everything went calm. I understood that, yes. Something has happened in the spirit. Then a nurse came back. She said, can I speak for you for a minute? I said, yeah. Are you a pastor? I said, why? He said, I'm a pastor's wife. I came to, where is your church? So I told her, she said, all these things did not bother you. <laughs> he said, you would have lost that boy. I said, no, God is in control. He said, yeah, she know. Because she said, what happened to him, nobody could understand. Because they've tried everything, they've increased everything. Then that night, we went to sleep. But the next day, God showed up again. October 10 of 2020. 10-10-20. That date sent me a meaning. 10-10-20. God said, take this boy out of here to Duke. I don't know where the courage came from. I pick up my phone. I call Duke. Please send your, even if it's a helicopter or anything, just come and get Joshua. It's like, I was commanding them. A few hours later, they came up. They came, pick him up. Thank God that they came. And they pick him up. I went home to quickly go and change. I saw my wife, because my wife was sick too, at home. I saw her, she said, how is Joshua? Everything is fine. You know, you have to speak it. Everything is fine. Then God said, get your laptop and go to Duke. So we, I went to Duke. We were locked up in high CU for three days. I can't go out. If I go out, I can't come back in. So we were locked together, me and him. And during these three days, God was revealing things through the person that is sick to me. He will wake up. He will tell me some messages. I will write it down. When he's finally up there, do you remember telling me this? He did not. Even the election, because I was saying, who should I vote for? He came up, he told me who is going to win and what is going to happen to him after that. So he was giving me some messages like, I said, this is not within those three days. And thank God I was with my laptop. We even run the service from IC, from ICU there. That's where we did one of the Sunday service, right there. And what I will tell you is that what God did, I'm not going to get to this year. This year is big. I was even thinking last year was uh, bigger. But there's a scripture I want to share with us, which makes sense to me while I was going through this. It's in the book of Psalm 56, verse 3. And that is David. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Amen. So whenever you are afraid, put your trust where? Something changed in me that day and I resolved to worship. I had believed God, I have trusted God. Whenever I pray, I have, I have confidence that he will do it. I have hope that it's going to come to pass. But on my sister case and on my son case, I failed to submit. So when we look at faith, we look at belief. Believe in there, all the elements are present there in faith. Submission is part of it. When we fail to submit to the will of God, 
we are not fulfilling what God is expecting of us. The faith that he wants us to have in him. Amen? Amen. One thing that I know was that sickness is not eternal. Sickness did not start until the sin in the garden. So that means if sickness is in time, it's going to end in time. Amen. Amen? So anyone that even died as a result of sickness, they didn't die as a result of sickness. They were healed. Because forever and ever, there's no more pain and no more sorrow. Sickness ends here on earth. Amen? And that is uh, Matthew eight seventeen. Jesus took away what? Our sicknesses. And that day, I was able to sing the song, I surrender it all. You know? I surrender it all to him. So today, um, I just want, you know, when I'm hearing some song, and they open up some things in me, and um, I see that every bad experience that we had, God is turning them to good. COVID experience, some people experience it in another way, but it was God turned it around for good for me, even this year. Amen? That's why whenever I look at the song uh, of Moses' bliss, uh, you, you are too loving to leave me. So you are too loving to leave me halfway. What you start, you always finish. Amen? Amen? And when we go through all this, as a child of God, what should be our consolation? Let's look in the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. What should be our consolation? The scripture says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by who? God. By God. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when we go through tribulation, go through anything, God is working with us, in us, and is comforting us. So today, I'm going to cut it short. This is not the message today, but... I just have to share this. The message today, in my language, they say, where we are going is not far, but all the stopping destination on the way, they are the ones that are many than where we are going. So today, I want to uh, look in the scripture, which is uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13. When we talk about the blessing, what blessings are we talking about here? One of the blessings we are talking about here is the spirit of faith. Can you repeat with me? Spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says what? And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believed and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. This is Paul quoting David in the book of Psalm 116, verse 10. David said, he believed and what? And spoke. When you believe and speak, that is the work of faith in you. Amen? Every child of God is blessed with this spirit. It now depends on you how you allow the spirit of faith to work in you. Some people, they've killed the spirit of faith in them because of their doubt and because of the people they surrounded themselves with. Amen? David is writing here. David could not face Goliath if not for the spirit of faith. And this time, David is doing it with instinct. So he instinctively do what? Speak that I'm going to kill you. Look at Goliath. Goliath that has terrified the whole of Israel for 40 days has been lecturing them on fear. Amen? But David is going there with instincts. Now, we as the children of God, we have this as instruction. This is the instruction for us to do what? To let the spirit of faith work in us. 
and it says what? Believe and speak. When you believe and speak, you are creating. You are like the children of your father in heaven. He speak and things come into, into being. Amen? So we need to speak life and don't let the reality of this world change what we believe. And we need to speak it into existence. When someone is, speak, don't, is sick, don't say they are sick, they are healed. Call healing. It's dead. No, it's not dead. It's alive. This business is not working. No, my business is working. What you speak, you bring into reality. Amen? A good example I want us to look at is the four lepers in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7. Two verses, and we're going to stop there. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 to 4. Now, therefore, we are four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city. And if we shall die there, and if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrian. If they keep us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall only do what? Die. Leprosy in this time is just like uh, from the Old Testament book of Leviticus we see. This symbolizes sin and the separation from God. Even in human, we experience COVID and we experience six feet. For a leprous person, six feet is not limited to people alone, even your family member. So you are just cast away. These guys are at the gate of the city, sitting down. Nobody is going up and down. There's famine in the land. They have three options available to them at this point. The three options, if they wait at the gate, they do what? The second option, if they enter the city, they will face famine. And the third option, if they surrender to the Syrian, they may leave or die. So they have these three options in front of them. The third option was highly likely that they may die also. Amen? Amen? However, they know that there may be a slim chance for them. So what they did, they talk among each other and they do what? It was a decision that set the land free. You know? But if we go back, we see that God here is honoring the word of the prophet, Elisha. Amen? If these lepers fail to respond, to move, this may have not happened. I don't know what God is telling you today. When the leper decided to move, the army were hearing the sound of what? A great army. So as they are taking their feet and walking, it's like great chariots, great horses, they are coming. They think that the uh, king of uh, Israel has hired you know, army from everywhere to fight them. They ran away. But what happened here, we saw that these lepers moved. They did what? They moved. They did not stay in the same position. So I don't know what God is telling you, where God wants to take you, that you are still sitting in that same position. Amen? As they are moving... Things were happening. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Just tell your neighbor, feed your faith. Feed your faith. When you feed your faith, what will happen is that you are going to starve your doubt. So tell your neighbor, feed your faith and starve your doubt. I'm just imagining if these lepers fail to move, or maybe one of them decided to discourage them from moving, what would have happened? So make sure you are surrounded by who? Faith boosters. Don't share your plan and your goal with faith boosters. Amen? So share your, your plan and things with people who will boost your faith. Amen? Challenges show up. If I'm going to interview somebody for a job, I will ask you to sh tell me a moment where you face challenges and how you overcome it. You need to ask yourself, how many challenges have I faced in life? 
Or how many challenges am I running away from? But God is telling you, face it. He has given you that spirit already. Put it to work. Let the spirit of faith work in you. I don't know what God wants you to do. Maybe to further education and you are looking at the challenges ahead. But he's telling you, move. Do it. Amen? Amen. And when you, when you are doing it, you know, the worst thing that can happen is that if you decided to move from this to that, and if do, it doesn't work for you, all you need to do is to do what? Go back. So if you're in a business, it doesn't work, you try to do another one, go back to the whole business. That's why you need to be nice to people on your way up. Because you might need them on your way down. Amen? If you are not nice to them, you can't go back to them if you lose. So you need to be nice to people all around you. If God lifts you up today and things happen and you want to go back to where you came from, they will accept you because you were nice to them. Amen? But when you take that challenge and by God's will you excel, you will be the one that will enjoy it the most. Amen? And I want to tell you that if you don't do that, what we do is that everyone in the kingdom of God, God has given us ability. God has deposited in us ability to do things. But if you don't face challenges, you may not discover that you have it. So tell your neighbor, your responsibility is to discover your ability. Not only to discover it alone, is to develop it. And lastly, to deploy it. So you have to read these there. Discover, develop, and deploy. And when you do that, you will use that to Ephesians 4.12. You will use that to, to, to help us as uh, the body of Christ. You know, you will be completing the body. Amen? Okay, so, um, and I don't want you to be jealous of somebody's ability. You know, somebody that has 10 ability, God will not judge you based on their ability. That's why uh, the parable in the scripture talks about, you remember the parable of the vineyard? Some people came in the morning, some came in the afternoon, some came towards the end. They all get the same word, pay. So don't worry about somebody, don't worry about Brother Fabrice, he can play keyboard, he can sing. What God has given you is to clean, clean. God will not judge you based on what he has given him. So if you are here today sitting down, God has put something in you. You may even be thinking, I'm too old. God is putting in you to teach the children. Serve God. Teach the children. God has put in you, giving you the ability to know technology. Join the media. You, know, you have a friendly, uh, a friendly personality. Join the horses. Do something for God. Amen? And the good thing is that God will reward you, not only with the greater responsibility, but greater rewards. Amen? Okay, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to just ask us to, let's pray. I don't know what God has been speaking to you. Um, I didn't really go in the message because of the testimony, but just that little part of the message, God is speaking to someone today. One thing I'm hearing is someone feeling too old. And God is saying, I'm keeping you because I still need you to do something. In the children department. Amen. And somebody is about to enter into a business. And everything you are thinking about is just the challenges. But God is telling me to tell you, Look over those challenges. He's the one to make it happen. And trust him. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. And before we do that, I want you to just speak to the Lord. I don't know what kind of uh, fear is overtaking your mind. Just tell God to take the fear away. God does not give you the spirit of fear. He does not give you the spirit of fear. What he gave you is the spirit of what? Faith. I want you to pray. Refuse fear in the name of Jesus. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and of sound mind. I want you to bind and cast out every fear that is militating against the faith that God has given you in Jesus' name.